at the end of this debate, you may think to yourself that transversal descent and destabilization of witness disability is a good idea. The macro problem with this affirmative, however, is that the, this offense is crafted around a very central and poignant theme. Their bleaker and McNoble, McNoble and Delory Edmonds explain it all, but it's wrapped around a very specific vision, a substantial increase in federal control of Indian country. They have yet to prove why, in this specific context, with this specific resolution, we should endorse the statement of federal control to illustrate the instability of language, etc. Our argument at the end of this debate will be relatively simple. We are not impact turning your exploration of just the transversal descent, disciplinary power, linguistic instability. We are saying that you have justified the idea of criticism without a specific reason why the specific use of this resolution is necessary for that, that criticism. Our, all of our 1NC, 2NC, and 1NR evidence will illustrate why the specific statement that we should substantially increase federal control throughout Indian country is not the statement to wrap their project around. Show linguistic stability and stability by saying that Jason Ru Russell is a smooth character and that the federal government should substantially increase renewable energy use in the United States. God, I missed that topic, but don't use a statement that we should control and destroy Native nations as the sick plaything of Bleaker's project. The cross-examination also illustrates another important point that I want to be on the flow. The app has to prove an offensive reason why we should walk away from this debate with any other lesson than the ceaseless rejection of federal control. In the end, they are pine they say they pull that every other affirmative team has meant when they ran against it when they were asked against MSUCF. They have to read a slew of bad apologetic wood cards about how federal control can sometimes be good. Let me make it clear. If we prove federal control of the innovations is the linchpin of genocide, we win the debate. By proving this, we win that the linguistic instability instability created by the circulation of a mission of the federal control can only open up spaces for further colonialism and genocide. Close the door and reject the topic as explained in the two and see. Remember, we don't need to claim the federal control is objectively always bad, even if that is way off. Even if that's way off, if we win the strategy of conceding our federal control is a vehicle for genocide, it's bad for preventing the destruction of other people. But that ultimately, they're, they're ultimately denying their agency more than the affirmative can ever hope to liberate, then we win this debate. Now, affirming this topic with the warning of coercive federal control allows others to redeploy for coercive purposes, sending a statement of negation. This matter, Hibbets in 94, man, of course, will also show up our zero-pop thoughts, and even our actions calling a chess of battle or hearing someone else on the battle certainly encourages to be the competes of the hell. We're going to enact it as a harsh view potentially violent competition, the way I think it may to affect my behavior. The metaphor I used to hurt some of uh, the uh, influence how I'll play this test battle and the community can better may seem more appropriate if the battle metaphor becomes popular our entire culture may be led to the same conclusion and play chess accordingly. And our object link, the representation of Native Americans, keeps them in object status, sugar coating the bill of racism, property in 2000, South Africa, and GC, the chiefs of the speech, and the little, little tree book of both representatives of the glitch of the tear of the concurrence and the yearning pull of the white readership to provide us responsible and responsible treatment of nations for materials of the buffering list around the Native Americans to keep them within the object status as the yearning pulls of the military justified all just this attempts to rewrite the history of the Native Americans. Stations as another white nostalgia, sugar coated the pill of racial self criticism, creating some upper civil crime of the co to protect the other of the American Indian. And finally, as the assumption, to, to, the assumption that we can reform the broader system around the, themselves as the export cases a narrative of redemption which ignores our own complicity and should be rejected below. The group that the 18th stories are told from the perspective of a member of the group that is inflicted rather than suffered the injustice. This technique, technique allows the audience to imagine themselves in history from the perspective of the right thinking, white male leader. Identification is always with a character that is rather than exceptionally oppressive situation and so allows viewers to distance themselves from responsibility for those actions. One may imagine if I were on the American frontier, I wouldn't have committed a genocide against Native Americans, I would have been Kevin Costner, it all comes out to recently, I would have been a Nazi, but when, when one makes Oscar Schindler, when Oscar Schindler a hero, that's precisely the fact that most people were not like them, what the, what the identification accomplishes is the overcoming of the guilt to an active imagination, what we would not have done, the, what we would have done, fact, the distance between two pronouns, marks the success as therapy, much to the extent that the the film allows one not to take more responsibility for the past, is to be understood as the magic and denial, structuring the historical narratives around identification of the show, all the also puts the metamethical relationship that the audience is represented by a new character, yet their character simultaneously represents something like an American soul, they the trauma of parts of some level resonate with temporary issues of racial politics, such as the resolution exonerates the audience of more than just a path harm. The privileged exceptional character is the active one, and all the often the group is depicted as passively waiting to be saved by us. Racism is shown to be monstrous, there is no possibility that we are monstrous. The identification works as an invitation to ignore racial privilege and commonplace of contemporary racial inequality, and therefore it appears they're not really as racist or as unimaginable. I also want to argue that we aren't a grand theory. They can make the argument that we're a grand theory, exerting, exerting an inexcusability with their own transversal arguments, but we're a local theory specific to federal control with the Native Nation in the Indian country. It's not, we're, not making, we're not making any arguments about uh, any kind of revolution. We're just saying that in this specific instance, the debate community would benefit more from a conception of uh, rejection of the resolution rather than a reaffirmation or some kind of redeployment of the resolution because it is too risky in the case where genocide is not going. Now, specifically the case debate, I want you to extend our original DeLore evidence and the one the one is the explanation of all will turn our excellent a couple of links are leak arguments here from the 1AC and from the 2AC's uh, explanation or the first is linear thinking. Our uh, arguments that surround the 1AC, they make arguments as to how the debate community currently proceeds like the language of the resolution and how if they can exercise the can exercise the reaffirmation or a vision that there's counter the current conception of the resolution of that can cause transversal descent and ultimately be more effective in being with the world. That's an argument using linear thinking because the causal analysis between two different conceptions and ways of rethinking that links to their own argument. Second is their substance of causality. I've isolated about how they can do how their, their argument they can make the, the, the transversal descent and, and display this sort of distance to uh, allow them just a dissension of, uh, of transversal descent allows them to uh, claim capturing this kind of resistance. Also proves that they make some 
this causality, their baloney, the glory, 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 the
conclusion today that the global truth towards the discourse of technological thinkingness also means the recognition of the exile condition of the science constitution and irreducible contradiction that in the truth of intermetriality, the shadow, the heart of the light, the demand to be thought, the primary task of the marginalized intellect is the rethinking of the thinking itself. They can't do it, but this resolution is not something that can be defined monologically. Our argument is the affirmative, is, uh, the affirmative transverses the notions of the topic. Our intrinsicness, uh, they make arguments that it's not intrinsic to this topic, and they're right in some sense that every topic provides a, a different ways that language inverts itself, but our intrinsicness comes from the, we may, when we give the examples, the one is about how Indian country reverses itself, how federal control and the topic areas all transverse themselves. That's a productive side that this resolution offers us, that, that helps us to be in the world with language in a different way, and we don't, uh, our advocacies are wrapped around the resolution, we bust the resolution wide open that deny the possibility of their grafting arguments. And they don't win if they prove that federal controls back. Congratulations, you only win if you prove that we don't transverse those concepts, that we can't open those concepts up when they define it logically, they act the ethnocidal logic and the dominance the Blyker talks about. And look, we get, we get sick often from our Mingolo and Blyker card. It says that the universal approach to language is ethnocide and domination. It's ridiculous to assume that federal control was always bad, always bad. Policies that would clean up your rating would benefit people. Policies that give casinos to Indian, to indigenous peoples benefit people. Even the worst policies are both productive and destructive. When they get to find those kind of concepts monologically, they, they suck us into a, a too simplistic world. You should affirm the topic as every data has transverse to understand that we can't look at the world and we can't approach the world as something that's natural, that we can make laws about it. It's natural and grasp, but also our Delorean evidence is a double turn. It doesn't, it doesn't assume an absolute rejection of causality or problem solution uh, of the problem solution mindset. Delorean is specific uh, about how in, in certain contexts that we can do every day to set, but the problem solution at some level is inevitable. I'm going to get drunk after this round. I will drink a uh, beer. That doesn't mean that I am tired. That doesn't mean that I am in, 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 in an imperialistic problem solution mindset. An affirmation of a vision doesn't attempt to solve all of Western thinking. The one AC says that we need to rethink when we can, that we need to do things when we can, that we need to speak out when we can. That, that slow transformation of values is key. That the, the ballot for us doesn't solve everything, but in this round, it's a form of dissent against that imperialism. Keep your freaking eyes open. Right, so Tyler Durden starts out by mailing nasty emails, by subverting the regime of capitalism from inside, by peeing in the food of the rich, etc. All these things by challenging the system that he's locked within, but in the end, a bunch of zealots shave their heads and join his cause and blow up buildings, and Robert Paulson dies. Remember that his name was Robert Paulson. His name was the affirmative project. The challenge is understood violently. They recreate the system of domination and uniformity that they fought. The debate, uh, the, the, the debate community is not a bunch of shaved head goons, granted, but the transversal resistance of the affirmative can lead to bad effects. Their project may indeed be personally trans it may be fascinating to them, it may make them better people, but we're the only ones controlling the way that their project can be understood by other people, the way that the federal imperial system can manipulate the object of control, the way that they can redefine that vision. We're the only ones reading evidence about it, we're the only ones reading evidence uh, about the way that federal control is redeployed in the real world. Look, they may win a bunch of their arguments, they, win the, the, they may win that their interpretation of the topic is, is multivocal, that there's a bunch of different ways of understanding the text of the resolution, etc. These may be true, but they are not a good result. This is not something that we should propagate. Our evidence is amazing on this point. Our Collins and Hall evidence has no answer to it in the 1AR, there's no answer to it in the 2AC, that there is no single answer granted, that their visions are, are that there are many visions and ways of understanding things, however, these visions are defined by a dominant culture, they're defined by control, in other words, that their understanding of these things cannot escape the notions that they've already been tied into. Our Barber and Sherry evidence is fantastic on this point as well. Look, they've conceded our framework for this debate, which is essentially that we are the guards of reservations, we are the guards of concentration camps, and our question is how we deal with the people inside, do we understand what they're doing, do we understand how they get away, do we map their tunnels and find out where they're going and which houses will hide them and ask them where and why they're leaving and no, of course not. They've conceded our argument that we are an intellectual resource, that our community is one of debate and understanding and interpretation of these things. It could easily be mined for non-productive purposes as much as it could be mined for productive purposes. We know a lot about this topic. We know a lot about the continuation of genocide, etc. But the topic ends here. This is the last negative speech that we will give on this topic. This is the last seminar that you will hear about Native Americans and federal control. Is it what, Do you want to endorse the topic or do you want to reject it? Do you want to endorse federal control or do you want to reject it? Their interpretation isn't even clear. They can't tell you what it is. It's just a vision. It's a redefinition. It's a radical change. It's a rupture. It's a break. But it's a rupture and break. It will be re-diverted to the means of genocide. Our Freeburg evidence is fantastic on this point. That we, should not allow, we should not attempt to answer the questions. That we should not create a new vision. Rather, if we understand these things, we should let this knowledge come to, uh, come to us. We agree with most of their project, but we will internal link turn it. What do we do now that we have that knowledge? And we do have that knowledge. The answer is that we don't participate in a system 
of colonials, and that's uh, two pieces of Alfred evidence and the one in C are excellent on this point as well. That now that, that we may not be able to change the system, in fact, we cannot change the system. However, our, our actions within it do matter. Do we dirty our hands with it, or do we try and escape? Our dreaded evidence is the only historical evidence that discusses the nature of federal control. It says that, that, says that, 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 Dylan, uh, that Dylan S. Meyer indeed intended to change the system of federal control, that he intended to help Native Americans, but in the end, his, his, his experience in the War Relocation Board was just experience to run Native American camps as well, but all of these, these, these things are continuing. Free. The federal control doesn't get, doesn't get redeployed, no matter how we interpreted our Galoob evidence and not answered the one I argue that they essentially distance themselves from the system of imperialism. If we think that we can make radical ruptures, we are just making it easier to swallow the bitter pill of racial self-criticism. We are sugarcoating this pill. It's our crumbery evidence that we, well, we all like to think, look, if I was on the frontier, I wouldn't be general. I wouldn't be Custer. I would be, I, 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 I would be someone great. I would be Kevin Costner. I would love the Native Americans. I would participate in genocide. How true is that? Do you really think? How much do any of you really do about it? Little, our argument is that we should not continue to mine Native Americans for resources that conventionally be used to destroy them. They have no answer to this evidence. Our Hibbets evidence also says that the way that they understand these things, the way that they talk about them, spread through society in ways that they do not intend. If we describe chess as a game of war, for example, and people hear the metaphor, they understand chess as a game of war. In this context, federal control is not a game. It is genocide, and we should understand it that way and not, and not contribute to it. They say that they can find new solutions, etc. Uh, new openness, but their multicultural solutions are exactly the thing that we critique. Our Spano 7 and Sanchez says that there are strategies that those who are not part of the imperial system can use, can turn against it, that the victims can turn back upon it because they are not co-opted by its gaze. We are not these people, an argument that they concede, and our vision is not a liberatory one, but rather it's one that can destroy people. They say that, they say that Alfred spoke here, that we should run away from the topic. Alfred told us that federal control was bad. Remember the argument I made in the 2NC that we asked him, someone asked him, can you redefine federal control in a good way? No. And no is the answer to this one. Federal control might be subverting itself. Maybe the temple is falling down upon itself, but it should be fine to collapse on its own, thank you. And perhaps we should do things that can subvert this argument. They conceded an argument about resources that is above. They, they read their evidence about op oppositional intellectuals. This is true. However, how do you become this oppositional intellectual? Their evidence just says that we should perform these things within the canon, something that we do. Our, we have a better strategy than they do. We oppose federal control. We are oppositional in the sense we don't hide behind historical things. We're the only ones Why? reading these historical examples. They say, uh, they, they say that they can change things. You don't know what happens if you vote negative. You don't know what happens if you vote affirmative either. You have a fairly good idea that this transversal dissent of its effective as a cultural motive that can only be reappropriated. Our Friedberg evidence says that we hate the idea that we're complicit with genocide. The more that we get excuses to, in, to inflict violence on other people, the more we use them. They critique our Barbara and Sherry evidence. They say that it criticizes multiculturalism. This evidence says that the multiculturalists didn't intend their arguments to be used this way, but in how it was deployed. Their argument that we should critique everything we've learned on this topic, that our knowledge should constantly question, is not, uh, is not applicable in this instance yeah. because for genocide, you should not question these things. They say that Hitler was resolute. This is true. The federal government is resolute as well, and we shouldn't collude with the system. Our Barbara Sherry evidence simply says that, that simply says that the rejection of knowledge and constant questioning is bad in some cases. It allows us to deny the past as much as it allows us to affirm it. They have no evidence that the results of their project will be good. Their glory evidence doesn't talk about Native Americans. It doesn't talk about federal control. Our evidence is our Spanish evidence that the Native Americans should use these tactics that they should turn against the, that they should turn against the system, that they, but also that they should remain unseen. They say that uh, they talk about the topic as a site, but this site is one that should be rejected. It's the argument that I've made above. They say that, that we don't make any attempt to solve. No, neither do you. Our argument is that you don't have to make a progressive attempt to solve, but you should at least not be worse. The question you have to ask yourself after the round is how does can resistance occur within this round? The negative suggests that you should just walk away from the resolution and say no to it. Our argument is that you engage the resolution to affirm, it, the, 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 affirm the resolution as a vision. This fundamental cha fundamentally challenges traditional notions of affirmation. They granted out all of our arguments by, uh, for instance, uh, uh, being able to rupture these different systems of linguistic domination that provides the reason why you should vote affirmative. That allows us to transgress and turn language into a form of liberation from our conceptions, the ways in which language necessarily constrains the way in which we can act. That for this provides a, a, a direct offense into the Deloria evidence because that evidence talks about how when we have these narrow ways of viewing language and viewing the world that necessarily we engage in acts of domination. That's why we should rupture this title of affirmation. That's a reason why to vote affirmative rather than vote negative so that we can resist those traditional notions of federal control. Our argument is not that you defend federal control. The best thing they've got is some sort of rhetorical criticism, but they have not justified any sort of constitution, or uh, uh, rhetorical constitution, or anything. They just say that when you walk away from this round, somebody may look at the ballot and then say, hey, the affirmative ones, however, have how this round is represented elsewhere is irrelevant. They think that you'll get the leg legitimacy of the resolution. However, it's just likely you'll say, oh, it was the fourth. They weren't topical anyway. Our, our argument is we're not claiming that we're not claiming that they are a traditional Afro, or they're not, they're, they don't reside within universal truth. However, we 
you do not assume that they do either, but we still have a link to our DeLore Evans because our DeLore Evans talks about how these specific plans of action where you could just reject all federal control and it fails to reorient our manner of perceiving the world. That DeLore Evans is talking about specific plans of action saying, like, for instance, in bilingual education programs and college application programs and things like that, we always enact these programs. However, they fail to account for our fundamental orientation towards the world. Now, it seems that they would be, uh, they would be endorsing that as well. However, in the fact, when they, when they uh, by rejecting federal control, however, it's still the same situation where the hegemony that it knows, that thinks that it knows better for the sound societies that our Mingle Evans talks about that we need the sound societies to be part of our planetary production of knowledge before we make these decisions about these uh, complete rejection of federal control, even as their Collins and Hull Evans says we need multiple different visions. And the last uh, line of Evans talks about how dominant society's visions must stand beside those of Indian people's argument is that we allow for that standing beside uh, rather than complete rejection. The complete rejection of that style of thinking only uh, shows an amount of disrespect for that culture, which is not what the Delore Evans talk about even the Delore Evans that they read are arguing as a synthesis between those many different cultures and the ways in which we can come to grips with the ways of being in the world to resist domination is to show respect for different cultures, to show respect for death, sorry, for those different ways of approaching the world. This respect is accomplished through specifically an affirmation, uh, you know, they win their arguments about how we engage in instrumental rationality and things like that. However, that is combined with other ways of affirmation of the resolution, as well as the fact, look, their sharp arbitrary evidence loses them the debate in the sense that, that shows the competition in this round, because what they do is they want to set these stable foundational truths. Now, they won't say those are universal truths. However, that notion of stable truths shows the competition in this round. They cannot capture our affirmative in the sense because they insist on those foundations. Now, the Farber and Cherry evidence, they talk about how we about how we need to uh, have those in order to resist the Holocaust or we'll have the Holocaust denial. However, remember, he grants in, our, in, he grants in the two and R that that style of thinking that says it knows the absolute truth or it has a stable foundational truth is what justified the Holocaust because it do, the, 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 the Germans were able to objectively call the, 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 the Jews and the Gypsies and a whole plethora of other people as a scourge on society. And he says that, ironically enough, the federal control was able to do the same thing with Native Americans. That is our argument, that when you have these notions of truth and then you base your decisions on those notions of truth, then that leads to domination. Our Delaware Evans is excellent, as well as the Mingle Evans. So remember that they cannot capture the one you see because of the Barber and Sherry Evans. It contextualizes their, their solution within this round. Now, remember as well, our Spano's evidence, was, uh, which talks about how we can be oppositional intellectuals within the context of this debate round, the uh, context of the academy, the last part of this evidence that Joe reads in one they are said the oppositional intellectuals must dissociate as far as possible, but not by obliterating or forgetting its existence, by engaging in it uh, from the demystified and strange perspective of its genealogical or origin. An affirmation of the resolution and allows us to engage in that and engage in that genealogical or origin such that we can challenge those foundations. We shouldn't just ignore it. We shouldn't just walk away from it. We shouldn't just uh, forget that it exists as well as their, their spontaneous evidence. As Joe makes the argument, and I don't think it's handled, it's the idea that they're, they're miscontextualizing spontaneous notion of spectral invisibility because and Joe reads a card about how silent, the spectral silence means that rethinking thinking it's a strategy, like for instance the Vietnamese soldiers who use many different uh, tactics of opposition, for, uh, for instance they uh, 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 the guerrilla warfare and things like that does that mean that you become invisible or you disappear or anything like that or you close your eyes, rather the task of the oppositional intellectual is to actually engage those structures of domination only from a position in which they don't uh, assume those truth discourses they don't talk repeatedly about how, uh, about how we get redeployed by Freeburg or something like that, I don't even know how redeployment occurs in this context because our because our, our argument is about how we can be open to the different ways of being in the world. Our Delorean evidence says that, that can contribute to a slow transformation of values. Their the Delorean evidence as well, where I read the un underlying part, only contributes to that the idea of the synthesis between those many different cultures. Our affirmation is that the resolution has a vision, that is, it denies those, those traditional notions of, of, of instrumental rationality in which the words move from one word to the next. They gave, the, again, the example Alfred. However, remember, our argument is necessarily Alfred came here because he thought that there was something valuable in this community. If he felt that we should just say no and walk away from this resolution, then he would have showed up to this activity because it's valuable to affirm those different ways of being in the world, and it's valuable to show respect to these different cultures. The negative would just have you walk away and totally uh, reject those things. It's walking away. Oh, uh, remember Joe's argument well about how uh, walking away necessarily means that, or closing your eyes means that you get clubbed in the back while your eyes are closed because we need to examine those different forms of domination. They have the blue evidence about distancing. However, or, uh, however, the alternative for this is far worse. The idea that we can't have that style of resistance Instead, it's not just a, it's not just a, oh, this makes me feel better. However, this is a way in which we can participate in the slow transformation of values. <laughs> Thank you.
and in the final round of the 2002 Cedar National Tournament, the decision is a 5 4 for the affirmative Fortes. So I get to start. And I, I need to say that um, this is one of the best debates that I've heard in my 3,070 billion. Oh, thank you. No, I don't want to say all this in front of everyone in the room. Uh, this is one of the best debates I've heard in a million debates. And I will also say that I was one of the dissenters. And I will also say that I. Uh, found Fort Hayes to be a very challenging team to uh, lead a squad against of thousands. And uh, also, uh, in some ways, I considered this debate to be about the teacher, which you have been in many ways, to this circuit. And in my opinion, despite an extremely close debate, the students, which were the rest of us and were represented in, in an amazing performance by Michigan State, bested the teacher. And I can talk about that more specifically, but I don't want to. And the reason I don't want to is because I sort of feel that way about debate in general. The student often bests the teacher because if you invite an entire circuit to work against you, they will often find a way to do that. So the fact that you won this and that it was a 5-4 reflected a fine debate, and I know you're bummed out, and oh my God, you got Melissa, the old lady, so that really dooms you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I also want to acknowledge is the way debate changes. And uh, one of the judges on this panel is the first, and it's the first African-American woman that's ever judged this. And she voted for you guys, and you won, and since I was her teacher, and she's besting me in this decision. I think she should start. All right. I had no intention of signing. Um, okay. Well, Melissa put me on the spot. Um, I think there are two questions that I have to ask myself at the end of the debate fr from both sides. I think the first is, do I support or reject a resolution is my last act of the year. And I think that's an important question that you all bring up. Is that something that I'm willing to do? Um, I'm persuaded by the arguments from the 2NR that a flat out rejection of federal control has some positive aspects of it. It might allow us to have new visions. It, you know, it is a rejection of participation in the colonial project. Um, uh, Alfred says that it can be deployed. Uh, uh, that federal control cannot be deployed positively, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that there are arguments um, that Fort Hayes has that I think that swing that argument, for me at least. For instance, their argument that it assumes a static notion of what federal control has to be, i.e., you've already answered the question of what federal control has to be and said that we have to reject that, I think it's something that you all aren't dealing well with, uh, well enough with for me, for me to sign my ballot your way. I think that their argument that, you know, that assumption in and of itself is a part of the imperial project and leads to ethnocide is persuasive. And I think that unless we are able to, in some way, redefine what that means, or at least to attempt to realize that there's no static notion of it that we have to begin with, um, at least it's problematic, I think, as far as voting for the negative. I don't think that's something that I feel like you've answered very well for me, what the result is if I believe that you know, we can redeploy federal control to attempt to break up the text that it is or that it's assumed to be. And I don't think you get out of the argument that, you know, it is what we assume it is. Federal control is something negative. It's something bad. It's something evil. You know, but that, I think you make that assumption itself without making the other, like questioning the argument of whether or not that assumption itself somehow, somehow plays into the imperial project itself. 
I don't think that argument's necessarily answered in the 2 and R. I also think that there are arguments about why you have to engage um, both sides in order to have, cre recreate this vision. It's supported by some of the evidence that even you are reading. I think that a lot of the evidence in, in many ways ways toward the affirmative and making arguments about how that new vision occurs, how we have to be, uh, you know, we have to be resist these types of things. And some of your evidence says that the way to do that is to resist through silence, but their evidence is much better that talks about why silence as a means of resistance is what allows you to be uh, redeployed or become complicit in whatever it is that's going on. And their argument that we place these types of ways of knowing on the same level instead of separating them and letting one go one way and the other go the other way seems to me to be persuasive. I'm not sure it's something that you all are answering back and it's problematic for me at least that your evidence seems to support that, the parts that they read that you don't read, etc. Um, the last question that I have to ask myself is, will the 1AC project be redeployed uh, despite what their intention is? And um, I think that, you know, the question of how the project is perceived by others is an important one determining whether or not we reject the resolution or whether or not we support it at the end of this round. But I think that the end result is, is that both sides risk co-optation in some, in some essence. They're, you both risk doing violence to Native Americans, or you both risk doing violence to this project of attempting to resist. The question is, which one of those do I think uh, does less violence? And since the weight of your evidence seems to support that there is some benefit to some type of act of resistance and that, you know, their evidence, or their evidence, particularly the Loria evidence, which I think is really persuasive to me, argues that, you know what I'm saying, we've got to do this through this type of act of resistance. It means that we can't just ignore that there are other voices, other ways of knowing out there instead of, in, in favor of just saying that federal control means this and it has to be rejected. And so in the end, I decide that, you know, I think the one AC project could be redeployed, but so I also think the negatives project could be redeployed. And I think that, you know, I'm not willing to just say flat out reject the resolution in front of an affirmative that's saying that that rejection in and of itself is a silence, is a redeployment of the Imperial Act. And I'm not sure if I vote negative what that would do for us or what that would do for me. So. <coughs>